This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. And this is Kirsten Leister at Burger underscore Lurker on Twitter. And this is Obsessive Viewer. The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. That's what we were going to say it together. No, we weren't. <laughs> that was never the plan. Yeah. One, two, three. Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Obsessive Viewer <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> We're a movie and TV We're trying podcast. out a new intro today. I guess we are. <laughs> Yeah, do your, do your, whatever, do your thing. Oh, okay. Um, the, <laughs> welcome to the Obsessive Viewer. We're a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show, each episode. You can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com, more of our podcasts at ObsessiveViewer.com slash podcasts, and you can find us on Patreon at Patreon.com slash ObsessiveViewer, <laughs> where you can pledge a minimum of $1 per month that gets you access to an exclusive RSS feed with content recorded specifically for Patreon supporters. Guys, it's worth it. It is. It's there's some quality yes. content, not like this garbage here that's hey, free. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's like the good Pump stuff the on that, but yeah, the good garbage um, that like your garbage. mom pulls it out of the trash can and is like, should this be recycling? Like that yes. kind of garbage. Yes, I, I like that. I like yeah. that. Um, and then also, if you pledge five dollars or more, you get access to the RSS feed as well as exclusive video reviews mm-hmm. of movies that we see. So we're up look at to, our ugly mugs. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's something. So anyway, that is at patreoncom viewer. We are here today. Here Kirsten is making her triumphant return to the podcast. Um, in a um, <laughs> why did you turn into a chicken? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I was doing like a tr- like a trumpet thing. I know. Yeah. Like I should I should have done just a uh, rap horn. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, um, <laughs> Turn down for anyway. what? <laughs> anyway, oh, uh, Kirsten, you're making your triumphal yeah. return. I this episode is going to go up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's our knives out review. It's all we're going to be doing. It's a special bonus episode. Yeah. Knives out. Knives out. Wow. We got, yeah, we just got out of a, an advanced screening. Um, I I didn't get to like some of my friends from the Indiana Film Journal Association oh, some were there. Some of my friends. Yeah, I didn't oh, get to see them because no. I really had to pee afterwards. Oh my friends! And they were I had gone. to go pee with my friends. I did, uh, that's not. Oh, I had what, to go pee on my friends. That's not. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Matt hurt. <laughs> I see. Everyone's gonna think you said that too because it sounded just that like did you. Not sound oh, just no, like me. Oh no! I had to go pee on my friends. It, that is not what I sound like. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, so yeah. Before we get into our review and everything, uh, Kirsten, what's been up? I, I don't know between now and release of this episode. Maybe we can get you on for another episode. Yeah, we'll yeah. I've, uh, my schedule has freed up considerably. Yes. I I had a lot going on. You did. I I moved. You did. I was in Hamlet. You were. Um. My cat went missing. Yes, for several hours. Yes, um, and Oof. she's back. She's safe. She's what a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I, she. I'm, I want to give the whole story, but I want it to be like on a Patreon thing. <laughs> yeah, you got to pay yeah. for this. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So so pay the pay the Patreon. <laughs> Pay for Patreon and you can find you can learn the harrowing tale yes. of my cat. It was a harrowing tale. It, I was harrowed. Yes, I was. I was. Uh, I would. God, I yeah. was sobbing. I was you a. Were. I was a mess. You I were. really was. And like, and, and you, you very nicely. I called you and I said yeah. it was. It was like a Saturday morning, and yes. I was like, "Are you busy?" And you were like, uh, "No." And I was like, "Will you come help me look for my cat?" <laughs> And, and you did. It, I, you know, I'm not a superhero. But no, you're not. I, hey, but I like. Do you remember the first thing I said when I walked in? I said, "You know, you'd be a lot prettier if you smiled." Oh my um, god! 
What? I'm gonna kick you out of your own car. <laughs> it's not even my car, so <laughs> I'm gonna kick you out of your mom's car. Yeah, please don't. It's my mommy's car. <laughs> um. Anyway. Oh God. Um. So yeah. So that was a that was a harrowing experience. Yeah, but we're not here to talk about that. We're not. Yeah. We're, we're not here, here to, to talk, talk about, about that little asshole. Knives <laughs> out. Knives out. Knives out. So. We just got out of an advanced screening for Knives Out. Uh, we went perfect direction. We went to the theater. That is and false came information. Home and yeah, it's. Will it's, you do me a favor? Yeah. We pull out your phone and that GPS us to the theater. Like. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> That is not accurate. Oh, no. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> that was an actual no. recording of Matt Hurt. <laughs> oh, uh, no. So wow. Again, that's amazing footage. Kirsten right is making her triumphant return to the podcast. <laughs> and triumphant it is. <laughs> yes. We're so, going to have a very lengthy Patreon episode. So, we need to talk about your 30th birthday. Uh, bo- oh, I did. Yeah. yeah I forgot yeah. to list that when I was listing all the things. <laughs> yeah. I turned yeah. 30. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I joked with you earlier tonight that you've aged out of the podcast. So uh, th- This, this age podcast. requirement is only for women, apparently, because uh, I am uh, still uh, on the youngest co-host... I never said it was just for women. I said you're the youngest co-host, but also the only woman. I, you just happen to also be the only woman. And I've it's hit not, thirty. And you've hit thirty. And you therefore, know. it's it's like when you drive a new car off the lot, it mm. automatically becomes devalued. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've hit thirty. When we, when, I'm off the lot. When we became friends, <laughs> our friendship like. Started, oh, I was devalued uh, immediately just oh, by yeah. being like uh, by association. Wait, no, you twisted <laughs> this around. I don't like this. So knives out. Um. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is a non-spoiler so, yeah. review. Yes. Okay. So go- going into this. Okay. First, I... let's read the plot summary. Oh my. Um. So yeah, let me let me go ahead and read the plot summary. I'm yeah. so sorry. Wait, you don't even have it up. I don't. That's what she said. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. You get it. Yes. Knives out. Okay, and I'm going to try to read it in Daniel Craig's accent. <laughs> okay. Uh, Good luck. Okay. A detective investigates nope. the death. <laughs> <clears throat> a detective investigates the death of a patriarch <gasps> in, of an eccentric combative family. <laughs> That sounds more like uh, House of Cards. <laughs> uh, I suspect foul play. Yes. I have eliminated no, no suspects. Sus- that was a great uh, accent he used in that movie. It was, it was. Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> Okay, so Knives Out is written and directed by Ryan Johnson, Mm -hmm. who the internet is ridiculous. Um, He directed the last. That didn't make any sense. Oh, it did. Who Um, the internet is ridiculous. Who the internet (laughs) is ridiculous about? Yes, yeah, that's what I was saying. uh, Who the internet is ridiculous. Who the internet is ridiculous because he directed the Last Jedi and. Insecure fanboys hate uh, anything that doesn't match their personal um, expectations. By the way, like, he totally put some shit in this movie. He did. (laughs) Uh, It was so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. So this movie has an incredible cast. Um, Yeah. Chris Evans... Uh, the, oh, um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis, Daniel Craig, Lakeith Stanfield. Mm-hmm. Um, I meant to look up who that guy, who the other officer was. Yeah, he, he, he did look familiar. so familiar to me. Um, ah, that's so bright. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, sorry, guys, I'm just looking at my future. Yeah, oh, <laughs> oh, I don't like that. <laughs> um, Tony you don't, Collette? <laughs> you don't like... Oh, uh, Ricky... Ricky Lindholm? Lindholm was in yeah. it, yeah. Um, Don Johnson, Catherine Langford, uh, Michael Shannon, a bunch of people. Ana de Armas. Jaden Martell. Was, oh, and Christopher really Plummer. Jaden Lieberer. Mm-hmm. Lieb, Lieb, Lieberer. Y- yes. Lieberer. Yes. Lieberer. Lieb- yes. Frank Oz. Yeah, Frank Oz. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it's a movie. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a movie. It. it is a movie. <laughs> All right, let's talk uh, about it. Yeah, so let's go into non-spoilers. This is non-spoilers. Yes, yes. Non-spoilers. Okay, so going into it, yes, I was very much reminded of Murder on the Orient Express. Right. Which, as you know, I did not care for. Exactly. Um, and the reason I didn't care for it, and I'm not going to spoil it here, but mm. 
because the whole time I'm trying to solve the murder mm-hmm. along with the with the characters, yeah. and it turns out when it is revealed, there was no way possible. Like they come mm-hmm. out with like a ridiculous twist, yeah, um, that you couldn't have predicted. Mm-hmm. Like you can't take all the clues and put them together and come up with this outcome. Right. And so I was like, I just hope it's not like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. It wasn't. There it were was... little clues that you could pick up along the way and yes. carry with you. And things that you could like, aha, that's suspicious. I'm going to file oh, yeah. that nugget away in the nugget drawer. Exactly. You know? And then and then later you open the nugget drawer and it's like, look at all these nuggets. You know? Right, yeah. You dip them in your ranch and you eat them with <laughs> yeah. your... The, the nuggets or the donuts? The um, donuts? Oh, my God. There's, there's that was so bit, funny. There was a bit about donuts in this movie that was... We won't like spoil a donut. It. It's donut. I, like <laughs> a donut hole. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. It was. At that. It God, was this so was great. a very funny movie. There it were so many hilarious. great uh, one-liners in this oh, movie. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's back up real quick. Have you watched? Oh, I didn't mention Chris Evans. Uh, I did mention him at for the first name I mentioned. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so did have you seen any of Ryan Johnson's movies aside from The Last Jedi? So he did Looper, um, something. I didn't see Looper. Uh, Looper something. And, yeah, what was that movie? Um, uh, um, Obviously, very prepared for this. Go on. Yeah, I know. Um, the oh my god, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Why can't I remember it? Um, uh, it's like one word. Brick. Brick. No. Um, yeah, it's really good. We should watch that. Okay. That's a good like. It's a like a neo noir. It's like it's it's amazing. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, so so you haven't seen any of those? No. Yeah. Okay, and refresh hmm. our audience. Um, how did you like Last Jedi? It was good. I'm not a Star Wars fan. Yeah, me neither. I mean, we we both talk about that. I mm-hmm. I mean, I think they're fine movies, mm-hmm. but I'm not like hugely invested in the franchise. Yeah. Um, I thought they were. I mean, I, the the new ones are the beautiful. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm not like the universe. Just isn't. Hmm. Doing it for me. Yeah, same, same here. Um, yeah. So anyway, Knives Out. Knives um, Out. An incredible ensemble. Um, yeah, just yeah. So many good, like, and I love the way that it it introduces the characters mm-hmm. too, because we get like like uh, a few like main ones that mm-hmm. are that are introduced to us, and then we get like their version of what happened yeah and we see, like, so yeah you get sort of yeah. like unreliable narrators yes. throughout the movie so it's like what information can i trust right. and what can't i trust it's really yes. uh it's it's a good way of um divulging information mm-hmm. it yes i agree it's a great way to divulge information and just establish characters mm-hmm. and the dynamics because it's it's a big eccentric family yeah and I just really think that the the storytelling was great. Like, yeah, it was. The so, cinematography was really great it too. Was really good. Yeah. yeah, like just in the, 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 in the way the shots were angled and yes. um, yeah, yeah. The the one scene where everyone's crowding around her and mm-hmm. the shaking camera it just really added to great. the 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 hy- hysteria of the yes. scene. And that was that was such a nice yeah. like touch like yeah. that was so unexpected too. Just like that, like that flourish. Um, the lighting was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like there was. Like scenes where like people's it, it kind of evoked like classic like noir movies. Oh where, yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, where, where like, they're shadowed the and mysterious yes. with with, their, with the the smoke from their cigar. And yes, I have eliminated no, no suspects. suspects. Um, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh god, it was really good. Um, so the performances were all great. Who was your favorite? Who was the standout for you? Mm, oh, I don't know that I could say that there was a standout. Chris mm. Evans was very good. He was um, great. Like in the trailer, I, I loved. Well, Anna De Arnas? Oh yeah. Oh, she was Marta? very good. She was great. Yeah, oh, I don't yeah. know that I've seen her in anything, but I don't she think was I have she either. was really good. Um uh d- d- everyone was Daniel Craig was very good in oh, this. Oh, he was amazing. I I thought I really enjoyed him in this. Yes. Um, um Jamie Lee Curtis was really good. Yeah, she was great. Not, I, yeah, yeah. Um and also uh Tony Collette. My god. Yeah, what a weird character. It, She's, yeah. She's like she is one of my favorite actresses working like in general. Yeah, she was really good. Um I had such a funny like experience um uh sometime like earlier this year or maybe late last year, I saw like a video like an interview video or something that she did for probably Hereditary and like I've followed her career. Like I've loved like Little Miss Sunshine, The yeah. Shiny or I'm I'm sorry, The Sixth Sense. Um, Little Miss Shining, right. Little Miss Shining, yeah. Um, Hereditary and everything. And, like, I saw her doing an interview, and I'm like, 
she's Australian. <laughs> she's Australian? She's Australian. Like, I, I Has recently, she ever played an Australian before? I not that I've seen. Good for her. Yeah, and she's like, very convincing. Oh my, it's amazing. And like I yeah. was watching the interview and I was just like I like it's literally been like twenty years and I've never like realized that she was Australian. Yeah. But she was great in it and just the character like the characters themselves were yeah, really great. They were oh, very, Michael Shannon is in this. They movie were very too. colorful and it and yes. everyone was very distinct. Yes. Um you had liberal snowflakes, you had Nazi <laughs> boys masturbating in bathrooms. Yes. Um So good. Yeah. So good. Um the performances were great. So did it uh oh, interesting. Uh, so Ana de Armas was in Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I didn't see that. Um, yes, it was my movie of the year for twenty eighteen. The, the movie of the year. She play- oh, <laughs> <laughs> she played Joy, who was a uh, hologram um, woman that was uh, programmed to. Hoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who was programmed to be a companion to the main character, um, like a housewife companion kind of thing. Oh. And her name was Joy, and it was spelled J-O-I, which... It's cute. Well, yeah, on the internet, apparently I've heard that there is a certain um, type of, like, porn video called J-O-I, which is jerk-off instructions, so... So, so it's like how-to? Uh, no, how not how-to, jerk-off? It's more like a, from what I've heard, what I understand. It's yeah. like a, uh, <laughs> from my hours of meticulous yeah. research. <laughs> it's a, uh, by the way, this is a parking lot special. <laughs> um, <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> Locking the door. Uh, um, so, that's not um, no, fun to like joke a, about for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but no, it's like, a, I think it's like a more dominant... <laughs> submissive thing like uh oh 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 okay like now you do this yeah do what i'm telling you to do yes now um now uh jump on one foot yeah like a dirty boy like that i'm gonna sound bite that yeah uh simon didn't say (laughs) (laughs) is that like (laughs) if you pledge ten dollars on patreon (laughs) is this right (laughs) sure sure um (laughs) Some knives out. <laughs> Christopher Plummer <laughs> plays the patriarch that is at the center of the mystery. Yes, he was very good. I he know was he great. wasn't in a lot of the movie, but yeah. he was very good too. He, he was, was really yeah. Good. What a charming portrayal. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, like, I mean, we know he's obviously. I mean, he's got the pedigree behind him. Like he's mm-hmm. Christopher Plummer. Yeah, but like, I mean, just he did something just so good in it. Like it just felt like so. Yeah, it's called acting. Matt. Yes, acting. That. <laughs> um. When he do things on screen, it feel good. <laughs> um, but no, it was it was really it was a really good performance, and uh, yeah. And I and said, you know, I'm not really a wizard. Y- and he said, yes, but I want you to act like oh. one. Oh, Sarian that- McKellen. Okay, yeah. On the night there will be no script, so that goes for everyone. There will be no scripts on the night. So glad you're back on the podcast. Anyway, um, so someone anyway. out there is going to get that reference. Sure. Um, anyway, so, yeah, so the intricacy of the plot, like, it's not, what I loved about Knives Out is, and we're not going to spoil it here, obviously, um, because they actually played a video of Ryan Johnson telling us not to spoil it. Yeah, well, uh, uh, that's not what's deterring us from spoiling it, though, like, we're We're decent decent people. people. (laughs) Um, so. Guys, guys, we're decent people. We're decent. I'd give us, like, a good decent and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, give us a. I'm the Dees. You're a half. Okay. I'm, sure. Yeah. I'll, I'm I'll decent. You're like half decent. <sighs> because I'm such a rogue, such a bad boy of podcasting. So knives out. So knives out. Um, <laughs> the plot was just like it was absorbing uh, for me. Like I felt like when you have a mystery story, like the kind of hardship of like creating it, I would imagine is making it an engaging mystery for the audience and Mm -hmm. holding the interest of the audience. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to make it overly complicated so that they can't track it, but you Mm -hmm. also don't want to make it too easy. Exactly. That. And then you need to have those little nuggets or those little donut holes. Yeah. uh, Donut hole nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And like, it's such a, it's such a tricky thing to do to have something that like, okay, if you have one, one piece that's meant to be like misleading or Red have herring, a different context. Yeah. yeah. Like you don't, it's tricky to navigate that in a storytelling, like in, in storytelling in general, because you have to make it like you, you need to tailor how much of an impact that has on the greater story. Yeah. Because if, if it overshadows like the resolution of the mystery, you're screwed. Yeah. Um, so it's a balancing act. Yes. And without spoiling and everything, the resolution to this was very satisfying. It was so satisfying. So good. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. yeah really um I didn't feel handheld. Right. But I still Because you kept pulling your hand away. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Punching my arm, like, okay. Um You're embarrassing yourself right I now, am. man. Hey. Hey, you're embarrassing yourself. It's, it, it, it's fine. Stop it. Stop, They're on stop, my side. Stop embarrassing yourself. They're, by stop. the way. Anyway, so. <laughs> by the way, I just want to say uh, Robert in Utah was on my side that center, being in the center of the theater is better than being in the back of the theater and off center. We have that okay. I, you know what? This is not important to me at all. So It is important to me because I win. Good job, Robert. <sighs> Good job, Robert. Robert. Good job, Bob. Good job, you Bobby. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> you know who hates me more? Uh, Robert, Robert from Utah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay if you take away your Patreon so, so I, I don't. No, no, no. It. We're gonna watch that movie. We are. We're gonna Robert watch it wanted follows. us to watch it. Follows, yes. and we will. I just have yes. been very busy you for the been. reasons I listed earlier. Yes, and I need like a week now to sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, in my coma. Um, right. yeah. God, a coma would be so nice. Right. I had this recurring nightmare. Okay. Um, it was not while I was in college. It was mm-hmm. after I graduated. It started a okay. few weeks after I graduated college, mm-hmm. and I had it. Uh, for for months not every night okay but like i would have it a few nights in a row and then you know nothing for a couple nights and then a few nights in a row but i would have it was the same nightmare where i had a final that i hadn't prepared for it was a theater final so it was like an entire presentation of a one-act play okay and i had to have actors and costumes and lights i had to have you know a a props and a set design Mm -hmm. and a theme and i didn't have any of that so i'm running around to all my friends and i'm begging them like please just get on stage and we'll just we'll you know we'll say it's minimalism you know right um and that'll be my theme and no one will do it and so i go outside and i'm like i pick up a rock and Mm -hmm. i say brad can't fail me if i'm in a coma (laughs) brad was our our theater director oh okay and i take the rock and i start bashing in my head oh my god and that's when i woke up are you sure that's a dream because that would actually explain a lot and and i don't i don't know what triggered this because Mm -hmm. it was after i graduated college and after that stress was over and i just started having this dream and it was so scary jeez and i would wake up after bashing in Mm -hmm. my head with this rock and it's wow. like, what does it say about the American educational system? What does that say about you That's- <laughs> and your psyche? Anyway, so anyway. the whole point of that story is that I could go for a nice coma yes. right now. Just no yes. responsibilities and you wake up and no one can be mad at you for not going to work because, right? hey, uh, Sandy, I was in a coma. Yeah. Maybe oh, yeah. you didn't hear. Yeah. Ever heard of it? Coma? Um, <laughs> I'm the coma girl. <laughs> Maybe I was in the news. <laughs> Oh, God. So, anyway, Knives Out. <laughs> My God. This is the most uh, tangential. I know. I ever. know. I, yeah. Do people even like me? Because I feel I, like the, the episodes I'm in. You're well-liked. <laughs> you are. And it's it's fun to have like, you we, on. We spend, so, like, I bet if you tallied up, like, all the minutes we spend talking about mm. the movie. Yes. It would be, like such a narrow part of the pie <laughs> yeah yeah compared to everything else <sighs> yes. you don't think you were gonna eat your microphone I, for a second. i'm glad you went with that not the obvious <laughs> deep throat thing. well no uh yeah um <laughs> your anyway. microphone you're gonna yeah. deep throat your microphone yeah that's why i do everything oh <laughs> anyway <Bro>. um <laughs> again ten dollars <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> anyway um, parking lot special. So, yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, so how did you feel? Like, were you engaged with the plot? Was there any part of the movie and non-spoilers that uh, disengaged you or made you feel like it was a little bit? No, I don't think so. Way? It felt like it went really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, not because it was a short film, but because you know, the whole time I was like, "What's next? What's next?" And right. I was, I was actively uh, watching the movie, waiting for more mm-hmm. clues to drop. You know, same. <laughs> yeah, um, it was like yeah. Ozzy Osbourne about to bite the head off oh, a bat. Yeah. Jeez. Sharon! Um, Sharon! Uh, um, Sharon! <laughs> uh, but yeah, it anyway. was it was really it was really entertaining. And I'm I'm kinda thinking now maybe we should just make it this a non spoiler thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with yeah, that. Okay. Um Well, yeah. I this is one of those movies where even after it comes out, I wouldn't want to spoil it for anybody. Right, absolutely. Because it's such a fun reveal. Like, yeah. And it's not like one reveal. The right. whole movie is kind of a reveal. It, it you know? really is, yeah. It's so, it's really just... You're constantly getting yeah. information. It's very satisfying in, in the yeah. way that it's just... The way that Ryan Johnson does his mm-hmm. storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Very good, very good. Very good. Very good. Um, very, who very was good. your favorite character? Oh. Uh... Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good talk. Good review. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, na, 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 na. Maybe Daniel Craig. Okay. Was, yeah, me too. He was a very fun, quirky detective with his donut yeah. holes. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Just uh, all of them were so yeah, great. Yeah. I really liked Michael Shannon as well mm. as Walt. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. With the cane. I like Tony yeah. Collette. She was incredible. Yeah. Um, I kind of wish that Jamie Lee Curtis had a little bit more to do, but yeah. I mean, it's an ensemble. There's, you know, mm-hmm. it's hard to gauge how much time everyone has. So. All right. Let's wrap yeah. this up. Let's do that. Yes. I'm sleepy. I got to drive home. Yeah. I'm going to go get gas and maybe a, a drink. Mm. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. So that's our non-spoiler review sort of of Knives Out. Um, with with a lot of additional information that you guys a didn't need. a lot of additional information. Um I'm not going to make that joke. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, this is just going to be a brief thing I'm going to throw out there when this movie's released, and then we may do like a a full-fledged episode maybe with Fekus or someone. I don't know. Um, But, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening, and uh, Kirsten, welcome back. Thanks. It's uh, it's a pleasure having you back. Feels right. Feels good. It does. Feels right. Um, Back where I belong. Yes, you you do belong here. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, final thought. Uh, how do you feel about being 30 now? Good. Good. All right. Cool. Yeah. Nah. I, I want to be an old lady. Nah, you, you have said that. Yes. I just, I'm one step closer to fulfilling my dream mm-hmm. of being that old lady who lives in like the big house on the corner of the street that like all the neighborhood kids are like, oh, it's haunted, you know, and she's mm-hmm. a witch. And I'm like, maybe I am a witch, you know. <laughs> With all your cats and everything. I, just the one cat. My cat's going to live forever. Oh, for uh, sure. And I'm like, oh, I, might, I might be a witch. Like, that'll be me. And, well, like, no one can say anything to me because, like, I'm super old. Mm-hmm. And I might be a witch. Yeah. Ah! Like, I'll just walk around going, ah! <laughs> Who's going to mess with that lady? <laughs> as long as you have a, a spare room for me to come no. over and podcast. No. Yeah. Stay and out of my house. Don't. Stay out of my house! <laughs> that'll be me. Jesus. Okay, and then also final, final thought. How's the new apartment? It's good. Good. Okay. It's nice. No one has tried to break in yet. That's so awesome. That's comforting. You guys have your assignments. Um, all right. Do not. Don't break into Kirsten's apartment. Don't. I shouldn't have to tell um, you this. Yeah. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I'm going okay. to anyway. Don't break into my apartment. It There's is... nothing in there worth stealing. It's just me going, That's ah! true. Well, you do. Uh, uh, s- someone's in here. Someone's in here. Someone's in here. <laughs> uh, you you do- might hear some of that, so get ready. <laughs> you do have an obsessive viewer mug, so. Like I said, nothing hey. worth stealing. All right, well, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Check out Patreon. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah, thanks. And that's, uh, that's, that's it for us. That's um, a wrap. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do oh, God, next. No. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you couldn't have all right. me. That's no, couldn't right. Have. Oh. Uh, all right, so thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Okay, bye. Okay, so that was my uh, parking lot special recording with Kirsten. That was a non-spoiler 
for Knives Out, and now we're going to just dive into a Knives Out spoiler review with myself and Tiny. Hey, guys. Hey. Uh, in a separate parking lot special. Uh, that's right, guys. Uh, you're getting... <laughs> I'm going to regret saying this so bad. You guys are getting a double penetration parking lot special episode. Oh, God. I didn't didn't agree to that. (laughs) I am dreading when Kirsten listens to this episode. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah. So, we are going to go into spoilers for Knives Out. Tiny and I just watched it at another advanced screening. So, we're going to play a clip from the trailer. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be spoiling Knives Out. So check the show notes, all that stuff, and thanks for listening, and enjoy the spoiler discussion. You think one of his family walls, walls. killed? Is that what you're suggesting? You all love twisting the knife into one another. Up your ass. Oh, very nice. Matter of fact, oh eat shit. How's that? Eat shit. Eat shit. Eat shit. Smiling. Definitely eat shit. Gonna dance, gonna fly. I'm taking shit. I'm going for my numbers up. I'm gonna fill my cup. You know something. Spill it. I suspect foul play. I have eliminated no suspects. Now, Tiny, uh. We're spoilers on for Knives Out. Yes. Uh, we just got out of the theater, and um, you can attest to this the entire ride to the theater. Um, I have been working on my Daniel Craig impression. You have. Um, listeners to the first half of this Double Penetration parking lot special episode is uh, <laughs> will know that I did a horrible impression. So to uh-huh. recoup, uh, to, to kind of reclaim my honor, I'm going to go ahead and do my imp- improved one. Uh, okay. So... Uh, Hang on, let me let me get into the right. Let me get into character. Okay. Um, I suspect foul play, and I have eliminated no suspects. See, it's not bad. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you. Uh, that was the improved one, though. Or? I think so. Well, wait until you listen to the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with you. <laughs> um, oh, believe me, listen to that <laughs> recording. <laughs> yeah. So, Tiny, I have watched Knives Out now twice, and you've seen it once. What is your immediate reaction to Knives Out? Oh man, I really loved it. It's nice. uh, without question a top ten for the year. Nice. Um, I don't even think it's going to fall into honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I just. I just loved it um, for for so many reasons. I mean, it, it has the classic like who done it staples mm-hmm. and all that, but I feel like it kind of flips that and makes fun of it in a lot of places, yeah. which is just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's just it's just hit it out of the park on every level. Mm-hmm. The cast, the writing, the set design, um, the dialogue, everything mm-hmm. was just like nine or ten awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can't I can't imagine a better like. Who done it? Yeah, like a 2019 Who done it? I and that's the thing. Like sitting on this for the past few weeks, and then revisiting it now in the theater, where there was some kind of altercation in the theater. I have no idea what the hell happened. Yeah, well, not an altercation. It was like words were exchanged. Words were exchanged. Yes. Um, yeah. But okay. Well, we'll get into the spoiler review and everything. Uh, but just to clarify, just so listeners don't get all confused and stuff, there was something that happened in the theater at the beginning of the movie. Like, there were some kind of words exchanged. Uh, did you suspect foul play? God damn it, I knew you were going to go somewhere <laughs> with that. <laughs> no one was stabbed. No one was stabbed. I believe it was a fight over candy, so you, okay, what real badass. Your... Real badass. What? What is... What, like, what? I think someone had a bag of candy, and they were loudly taking candy out of the bag to eat it repeatedly and the person got upset really? and asked them to do something and then like the only like actual words i was able to make out were it's fucking candy okay like in that tone like it's fucking candy just, this is like this is our you were like the nazi masturbating in the bathroom oh my god <laughs> god damn it <laughs> no i like i i think i caught a fragment of that but i thought i heard it as it's a fucking movie um, like oh, whoever... I'm pretty sure he said it's fucking candy. Well, and that's the thing. Like the person uh-huh. that said that, they were in the row behind us. But earlier, there was some kind of 
there was some kind of altercation. Yeah, that, I don't know. Yeah, where I think he was the guy that was down in the front. Okay, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Okay, and I heard him say, I don't think I should leave. Oh, uh, um, okay. So I think that I think that Lionsgate, who, who put the put the thing together like they had reps and everything there okay so like if you notice like when the candy thing happened uh the woman sitting in front of us like got up and stood up and yeah like, was like sitting like standing right next to me right um like kind of waiting to see what happened but i i'm going to just assume that the, the man when he was at the front and saying like i don't think i should leave he was being cheated out of an inheritance that he was oh uh, uh, yeah but, could yeah. be he was being very uh R- ransom me. He, he was. I don't know. He was very being very Huey. Yeah, Huey. If we were the help. Yeah. Um. So okay. L- knives because out. Because you're an asshole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like. I loved the ensemble. Like oh. everyone was firing on so like all cylinders. Yeah. Everybody um, was killing it. Yes. And uh, just God, like the the dialogue is just so great. Like, yeah. Every, like uh, one of the things that I I don't remember if we mentioned this with Kirsten uh, in the in the non spoiler, but um, one of the things that I, I loved I just loved was like the little like digs at like just politics today. Yeah. Um, like there's that whole big discussion about immigration and stuff, and then and like Trump without saying Trump, but it's Trump obviously. Yeah. Um, what I loved about that is is Don Johnson having. <laughs> having the plate and he's ta- like this is brilliant yeah. absolutely brilliant it's so subtle it's so subtle he's talking about how like oh you know you work hard and you begin you have a place in 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 america and everything as he's handing her his, his finished plate <laughs> yeah his, like to to take away like which isn't even her job it's not even her she's, jo- a, no, she's, a, she's, a, she's a nurse caregiver. like she she went through a lot of education <laughs> to like get her job oh yeah that and like them constantly just like miss miss Geographing her, misrepresenting where she's from, yes, or exactly. like forgetting where she's from. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Like every single time her country yeah. of origin comes up, it's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So brilliant. Yeah. But that, and then like, there's a scene where Meg, played by oh um, Langford. Thirteen reasons why. Thirteen reasons why. Yeah, um, Catherine right. Langford. There you go. Um, she, she and she and uh, Big Bill from It are <laughs> are having like words, and she's uh, <clears throat> she calls him like a, an alt right troll, and then uh, what I loved is he's like he says liberal snowflake, but he says it like like very timidly. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, that is genius. <laughs> that is fucking genius. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that was, that was great. Just the dialogue, like, it's just very quick and everything. Uh And I mentioned this to you and I didn't do my due diligence uh, to look it up because I, I, like I've said, I've seen this twice. This time around, I am so convinced that the voice on the TV show or movie that Marta's like sister is watching um, I am almost positive that that's the voice of Joseph Gordon-Levitt. That's awesome. Which is great because he's obviously he's collaborated with Ryan Johnson before. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, what else? Did, let, let's talk about like what had you? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I first of all, as like a as like a a true like whodunit mystery movie, mm-hmm. it's like it's like better than serviceable. Like I think it's truly a. Um, it's like on par with some of the like great whodunits, mm-hmm. you know, um, like Murder on the Orient Express. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I I didn't really know who was who did it at the end. I really didn't have a theory. I mean, throughout the movie, I was like, oh, I wonder if they did, or I wonder if they did, or and I thought maybe um, uh, Marta was pulling like a Edward Norton in Primal Fear yeah. thing the whole time. I thought that might be a thing. I really thought that the whole vomiting thing was going to be like a, re- a red herring or a misdirect yeah. or something. Yeah. I, I, I could have seen that. I could have seen like the 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 mother like playing yeah. into it somehow yeah. or um uh big bill from it because right. he just like hardly said anything the whole time right and he was just on his phone the whole time i was like hey he could play. i don't know like yeah. so i i really wasn't sure um i love the way it played out but oh uh, me too i love the way it knives it out yeah <laughs> um that's another thing i'll i'll talk about that in a second but um the uh the way that it kind of just reveals itself very early like 15 minutes um like 15 about 15 minutes in the movie um we get like 
what happened. <laughs> like we get yeah. actual like we were shown what happened. Right. Um, also, uh, cinema blend dot com. Uh, says, although Joseph Gordon-Levitt doesn't physically appear in Knives Out, that's not because Ryan Johnson didn't want him to. The director told Jeff that uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's schedule simply wouldn't allow for him to appear in the film, so a voice cameo is all they could manage to keep their collaborative streak going. Nice. Um, so that's great. Uh, I, I I was so tickled that I picked up on that. But That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the... What was I saying before I sidetracked myself? Um <laughs> <laughs> mm, uh, the, words uh, who done it oh revealing itself so yeah us basically getting like the reveal of like what happened to him like when i saw it i was like i it's so interesting because on one hand it's like we're getting like this tracks this is yeah this is what happened and on the other hand it's like how are they going to reverse this or work this out to be something different like how is mm-hmm. ryan johnson going to go from here to make it something unique and the reveal at the end is so good yeah um did you have any inclination that any of that was happening no no not at all mm-hmm. i i really didn't uh yeah nothing else to say i i yeah. didn't i didn't know where it was going to go mm-hmm. have yeah. you read or seen any hercule Poirot? i don't know uh no i i haven't okay i, I watched the um murder uh, Murder, Murder on the Orient, Orient Express. Express by Kenneth Branagh last okay. year or whatever. Um, Which Kirsten was not a fan of. Oh, really? Yeah, she uh, hated it. <laughs> okay. Um, I liked it. I liked it. Okay. I thought it was good. Uh, but that's the my only experience with that. Okay. With that uh, genre or that, you know, franchise, franchise. I guess. Because yeah. the whole time I was watching the movie this time, I was like, I want to either A, I want there to be a franchise of, of ben, uh, Benoit Blanc. Yeah. Uh, the Last Gentleman Sleuth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Or I want to find a like the closest thing to that character in book form in mystery writing. Yeah. Um, so I may check out some poiha or poiora. Yeah. Or, 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 uh, but like that was one of the most brilliant things about the movie is how he kind of made fun of the genre. Yes. And like you know, there's always this like sort of poking fun at the Hercule Poirot character, how he, you know, he's always flawless and he figures everything out and yeah. gets all the details. And he's like, there's one detail I can't find out at the end, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just like, he he does, but he's kind of a fucking moron. <laughs> he really is. Throughout. Oh my God. It's so brilliant. It's great. It's so brilliant. He's yeah. not like a Columbo moron. Right. But he's just, he's just like a dumb guy. <laughs> like he's a he's dumb. So, he's so wrapped up in his, his aura, his, <laughs> yeah, his persona that he exactly. misses obvious shit. Yeah, like oh. the shots of her, like of her taking the, taking the piece of the, uh, the thing that broke off on the side. The lattice or whatever. La- yeah. yeah. And like, you see the shot of like her behind him just throwing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, like oh the comedic God. timing of this movie is so good. Yeah, so well, it's just the fact that the the uh, uh, I guess the like the theme or like the the visual that he <laughs> focuses in on throughout the movie the the or well like the first there's two of them the the big one is the donut which comes up which is just <laughs> oh my <God>. unbelievably great. <laughs> But then the other one is like the the rainbow thing he's going for, yeah. and it turns out it's a reference that he's not even familiar with. Right. Like he never even read the book, and he just the, keeps uh, coming back to the the oh, arcing rainbow or whatever. Yeah, it's like the uh, the oh, the, it's 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 a very colorful kind of right. expression, but it's like the um, oh the the terminus at the end of the rainbow or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, so but the donut thing. Oh, it was amazing. My God. And Daniel Craig, just like, <laughs> the way he says it, he's like, a donut. <laughs> like, he has this revelation that he thinks is brilliant, and it's like, that's the dumbest it's just, analogy. It's a dumb analogy. It's so dumb. <laughs> and, like, I love it in the car when he says it. <laughs> yes. And then when it comes back to play, in, like, the <laughs> end, like, the, the big reveal scene yeah. is so brilliant. He's like, there's another, there's another donut inside the donut hole that we just filled and i'm just like oh my god this is this is genius <laughs> it is that was so funny oh my god um, I, I wasn't prepared yeah. for how funny it was gonna be oh yeah because i mean there were just like like not just like uh situationally funny things and mm. like you know you get a good laugh out of it but there was like total laugh out loud moments oh totally like literally where like you kind of missed the line of dialogue yeah. after a joke because the whole audience was laughing so mm-hmm. hard so that's not <laughs> very untypical of the genre right of the whodunit <laughs> mystery genre 
Oh man, so good. It was fantastic. Um, I did. I I got such a huge kick out of just the end where Ransom takes the knife. And he's like in for a penny, and like it's revealed as a prop knife. That gag was so brilliant, so brilliant, and brilliant because early in the movie, like one of the first scenes with Harlan, he's talking to Marta, and he's like he picks up the knife, and he's like, uh, "Ransom's too stupid to know a prop knife from a real knife." Oh yeah, and I'm like, like when when he grabbed the knife, I like kind of nudged Kirsten the first time I saw. It. I was like, oh, "There's a prop knife, prop knife." See, I didn't. I, um, I wasn't there yet. Oh yeah, I wasn't there yet. Um. Yeah, oh, it's just, it was it was my own way to kind of fill the hole in the donut. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> but like you know, it was it was funny enough that he he pulls the knife away and you mm-hmm. see that it's a thing. But he, he just like he just he like he just a check. He like does it again. He, he just goes shit. <laughs> like that was just made it so much better. Oh, perfect. Like the de- the delivery on everything. Oh it's yeah. It's like it's these little subtle touches that mm-hmm. like I don't know how like a writer. Mm-hmm. Someone who write—I don't know how a writer comes up with those small little things that just yeah. make it like it's funny in and of itself. But then you add in that tiny little thing, and it makes <laughs> it hilarious. Oh yeah, and especially in a you know something like this that's not a comedy per se, right? Uh, yeah, that's just like the mark of a truly brilliant writer in my yeah. book. Yeah, and Ryan Johnson, my God, yeah. I I just I adore that that man. I know, me <laughs> he too. He is amazing. Yeah. Um. And I'm I'm just so I'm excited like I like I don't even care if he does Star Wars I just want to do more original yeah. stuff like this. Um yeah God so good um mm-hmm. the 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 knife thing the 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 oh the <laughs> the um the detective and the the, the trooper the, the trooper yeah like the troop like he was. Like he, like again, like you said, like picking those little moments and just adding something. To yeah. It. Like they're not like I love Lakeith Stanfield, uh-huh. and like he isn't really given that much to do in this movie, but it's such an ensemble piece that, like every little bit that he's in it is like it enhances it a little bit. Like, yeah. Just like everyone else. Right. Um. But that <laughs> that trooper, him being a fan of of the books and everything. Yeah. It was just so so uh brilliant and like him like the little subtle like tiny um like not jabs but like the back and forth between him and lakeith stanfield's character like when when he's putting ransom in the backseat of the car and um like ah, i can't remember if the trooper says i don't remember what exactly the trooper says but he said he either says thank you or i'm sorry or something <laughs> okay and you just hear lakeith stanfield saying like don't say thank you to him <laughs> like, <laughs> i missed that just, part yeah it's so small and uh. so like you will miss it but it's just it's little things like that and then <laughs> And like the look of just glee when when uh, when uh, Blanc is going through like his whole spiel at the end, and, yeah. like the trooper just has this look of pure joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so good. Yeah, it is. Oh, um, yeah. So, how did you feel about the the actors and uh, in in the ensemble? Who was like, your favorite? Oh man, I don't know. I life. Uh, I don't know that I could pick. Yeah. Frankly, um, I it was really fun to see Chris Evans. Mm-hmm. I think he was great casting because you know we're in spoilers, so he did yeah. it. He's the, he's the who he's who done it right. Um, and we've literally he's been like over the last ten years like a pillar of you know heroic justice and all that yeah so it's kind of cool it was g- genuinely fun to see him play an asshole first of <laughs> yes. all and then like be the the villain yeah. who like totally deserved it that was like oh, really yeah. really like good casting on their part mm-hmm. uh, but i would have loved to see joseph gordon levitt in that role too oh yeah it would have been great for that man role. that would have been good yeah man um this makes me want to go back and watch brick yeah um, oh totally yeah totally um, I, I mean, Don Johnson was so delightfully dumb. Yes. I mean, I, I haven't really seen him in anything. I haven't either. I just found out recently that he's Dakota Johnson's father. Oh. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, I don't think I ever knew that either. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but yeah, like, I, I'm just not familiar with him at all as an actor, because I just haven't seen oh, his yeah. work. Um, other than, like, Django Unchained. Oh, yeah, that's he's right. He's in that for, like, two minutes. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm just, I wasn't familiar with him, but he was just, like perfectly dumb oh yeah and i just loved his oh, mm. yeah he was great um the whole family did such a great job of being this just dumb privileged like yeah just in like all different facets of it like i like tony collette oh she's oh my god she's like, amazing is she in granted she is like i would say she's probably like like in my top three of just favorite actresses oh, yeah. that's great yeah um 
Because she's just she's incredible and everything. Like she's a little underused here, a little bit. But it's an ensemble, and when she's on, it's like it's it's perfect. It really is. <laughs> um, and it's <laughs> I don't even want to say it's against type because she I doesn't have a type. She has a type. She does she's not have like a type. Freaking chameleon. Yeah, she pl- she's the female Gary Oldman. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's just so like it's a it's a it's a a facet of her acting that I don't think I've seen. And it's just, it's so brilliant. Yeah. I um, loved her. Yeah. Um, I can't think, I can't remember her name, but the, uh, Marta. Oh uh, yeah. Her Anna. Name? Anna, Anna. I, I think she's Spanish. Brazilian, she's Brazilian. Ecuadorian. <laughs> I, Uruguay. <laughs> Uruguay. Um, <laughs> I think she, I want to say she actually is Spanish. Uh, let's find out. Yeah. Uh, her name is, Vamping, uh, <laughs> uh, Ana de Armas. Okay. Um, born in Cuba. Cuba. Damn it! I yes. thought she was Spanish. Yes. Oh, wow. she was in. Oh, yeah. We. I, I talked to Kirsten about this. She was uh, Joy in Blade Runner twenty twenty nine. Right. And uh, I just remembered that that conversation that I had with Kirsten went to some weird places. <laughs> so um, I'm sorry, or you're welcome, or I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Wow. <laughs> um, but I've only seen her in a few things. Like mm. uh, she was in that gun runner movie with yeah something uh, with dogs or yeah dogs doggies more dogs i don't know um, um and little, she was she was really underused she was just you know a love interest kind of oh yeah and then she didn't i don't think she had a lot to do in blade runner 2049 she's i mean she's basically a sex object in right. that movie um and then i saw her in the more dogs was the movie more dogs um i saw her in the movie with uh she was in a movie with uh keanu reeves it's kind of oh. like a horror movie where uh like two girls knock on Keanu Reeves' door. Oh, like, knock, remember. knock. Knock, knock, yeah. I haven't seen that, but it's been on like on one of my streaming queues. It's kind of cool. It's it's a fun it's... watch. Um, but I just feel like I, I hadn't really really like seen her in a meaty role, and I, I wasn't really sold on her as an actress. I wasn't, oh, yeah. I wasn't really sure. I, she's unbelievably gorgeous. Oh, um, like, yeah. Really beautiful. I knew that, and so I was happy to see her and just about anything. But like in this movie, I like I was so sure that... At some point, somebody was going to be like, oh, she's probably sleeping with so-and-so, or I bet she's sleeping because <laughs> that's what everybody thinks about good-looking girls. Mm-hmm. But like they, the, the cool thing about the role is this, it was not about, the character was not about her being attractive and being pretty. Right. Like, oh, yeah. And she like, man, she absolutely crushed it. Oh, she was I, amazing. I was so... She was a great Watson. <laughs> she was, yeah. I was so happy to see, like, you know, she's she's really good. She's not yeah. just a pretty face. Like, oh, she's, yeah. she's phenomenal. And she's going to be in the next Bond movie with Daniel Craig. Oh, nice. No Time to Die. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah, I, she was great. I don't know that I could pick a favorite, really, because mm. um, they were all just so damn good. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Um, I, and I, I love Daniel Craig. Like I, yeah. Like I was saying to you when we were walking out of the theater, um... I would just, I would watch a whole franchise with this character. Oh, me too. Like, oh, man. I would I would love it. Yes. Um, God, it's it's so good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but of the family, I don't. You know, I it would be tough for me to. Uh, Chris Evans, I think, nailed yeah. it really well, and I think that's partly because he has such a big role to play in the end. Right. So right. That could be what inflates my opinion of his, of his, what, what makes me want to pick him. Mm-hmm. Um, also he's Chris Evans. I mean, he's yeah. Amazing. How can you not pick Chris Evans? Yeah. For anything. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, I've, I, and I've told the, oh, no, no, I've said this, to, I've said this to, to Kirsten about a few people, but <laughs> <laughs> like he's too talented. Like he's, yeah. he's too, like he's too good looking. He's too talented as an, of an actor. Like <laughs> pick a lane. I know. Come on. Dick. Yeah. And now he's trying to direct. Is he? Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he did like, that one movie. Um, uh, well, he, yeah, he wanted to kind of get out of Marvel, yeah, yeah, I think, because right. he wants to start directing movies. Yeah, and that was a really good relationship drama that he directed. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it. Um, it was yeah, it's it's good. It's um, I can't remember because he starred in it too. Yeah. Um, Where his daughter was like a genius or something. No, you're I'm thinking, thinking of, something of else. another movie. Gifted is the movie you're thinking oh, of. Okay. Um, I don't know if he directed that. Actually. Oh, I don't know either. I, th- I thought that's did. what he did, but um, um, I, I keep wanting to say "Away We Go," but uh, before we go, before we go, uh, okay. 2014, before we go, him and Alice Eve, um, really oh. charming relationship drama. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Oh, I definitely recommend it. Nice. Um, yeah, two strangers stuck in Manhattan for the night grow into each other's most trusted confidants. 
uh, when an evening of unexpected adventure forces them to confront their fears and take control of their lives. Mm. Uh, very, very good. That's nice. the only thing he's directed. So okay, yeah, all right. Um, yeah. Anyways, I yeah, I, I don't know. To I guess to wrap up, mm-hmm. like this, this is solidly in my top ten. Um, nice. I think Doctor Sleep still in my number one spot, but uh, this is. I mean, this is the top half. Nice. Going to be a top half movie. I I'm just man, it was so good. Nice. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I agree. I. I've talked about this. I, I, this is going to be a big year for me in terms of just top 10 because I have so much to call from. You do. Um, you got a tough job. I, I do. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's funny because I actually mentioned, I think, on another episode at some point, maybe Patreon, I don't know. But um, I had mentioned that this is going to be one of the maybe the f- one of the first years that I... I'm just thinking uh, of a donut right donut, now. Yeah. I can't stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> um, but I can't... Um, but this... this uh, oh, what was... What was um, oh, uh, I kept... I think I've said that, oh, this is going to be like the first year that I've watched 100 movies that were released in the year of release and everything. Wow. Um, but last year I watched like 109. Oh, shit. Uh, 109 2018 movies. So that's the number to beat. Okay. Um, I'm currently at 85, I think. Oh, so you guys um, got some work to do. Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got some. But, I mean, it's going to happen. I've got... Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's insane. But... Uh, as of right now, my tentative top ten list, my top tentative list, is, has knives out uh, just shy of the top half. Oh, okay. So, Dang. yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, but we'll see. I don't know. It's it's been a it's been a yeah, it's been a good year. Nice. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a donut. God, it's, not, it's got a <laughs> hole in the donut hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pie and every piece <laughs> is there. I don't know. So great. <laughs> so great. Um yeah, yeah. Uh bonus question since we're kind of winding down and everything. Um of the of the cast of Knives Out. Mm-hmm. Who would you want to see in Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy? <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Any of them. Yeah, if you could um, pick one performer. One performer. Yeah. Tony Collette. Oh, inter- oh that'd yeah. be interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Like like uh Laura Dern was in Oh yeah. Um episode eight. Yeah. Uh and she's one of my favorite actresses. Oh, same. Um so yeah, seeing her was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, t- so Tony Collette, yeah, that'd be nice. a great pick. Um I feel like Chris Evans is too big to just kind of put in yeah. at the last minute. Um well, I mean, it could also be a star. I mean, he could be the star of it too. Right, right. Yeah. I know, but yeah, yeah. Was J- Joseph Gordon-Levitt had a cameo in the Last Jedi? Did he? I don't remember that. Um, I think so because he. I think he had another like voice cameo. Okay. Um, because like Ryan Johnson always has Joseph Gordon-Levitt in mm-hmm. uh, in his stuff. Yeah. Um. Ugh. <clears throat> okay, the actor plays an alien named Slow and Low. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, he is. Um. So yeah, is there anything else to talk about? Knives Out. I no. I yeah. don't think so. I mean, it's. Uh, I think we're gonna be talking about it again at the end of the year. Yeah. So. Have we eliminated any suspects? <laughs> no. Um, oh, I loved this movie so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good. Uh, so good. So good. I'm sorry. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, closing thoughts. Um, what would your rating be out of five stars on Leaderboxed? Um, I mean, I'm, pr- I'm probably going to give it five. Nice. Five out of five, yeah. Nice. Which is not, awesome. not unprecedented. I've done that before, right. but it's not common at all. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'll, probably, I'll give it a 5 out of 5. Nice. I have rated, of the 85 2019 releases that I've watched, I've rated two 5 stars. Okay. And several 4.5 stars, which Knives Out is a 4.5 star for me. Sweet. Um, yeah, fun side note of the all the movies I've watched in 2019, including like all the past movies and everything, I have rated nine 5 star ratings. Oh, wow. Yep. That's awesome. So, good stuff. 
Um, yeah, final, final thing, since we didn't do a Patreon recording, okay. um, this episode is hopefully, knock on windows of your car, <laughs> um, going to be released the day before Thanksgiving. Okay. So, Tiny, bonus round question for the episode. Okay. Um, what are your favorite Thanksgiving traditions? Mm. And do you have any movie-related or TV-related Thanksgiving traditions? Hmm. I don't know if it really counts because it's a stereotype, but I mean, watch, watching football. Oh yeah, falling the lions as, and falling the... asleep during the football game because nice. you're so full. Mm-hmm. Um, the lions and the Cubs. Yeah, Cubs. Or... <laughs> <laughs> That's baseball. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the Lions play on oh, okay. pretty much every Thanksgiving. I think the Bears are playing this year. I don't. Know. Oh, gotcha. Um, but yeah, uh, so the, I, I don't really have uh, Thanksgiving what? traditions nice. other than that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're having it at our house this year. Oh, that's a, is that the first time you're hosting? No, we did it a couple years ago okay. as well, but we learned some things. Nice. Yeah, nice. it's a lot of work. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. Uh, my sister is pregnant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she usually does it. Um, I think she is angling not to do it. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I told my mom, because, like, my brother also, he just bought a house, and they're doing stuff i don't know but i was just like, uh, like and I, this is gonna sound i, I don't know I, I, this isn't sad or anything but i'm just like you know mom if ashley doesn't want to do it let's just fucking go to cracker barrel yeah <laughs> get thanksgiving meal food right and just like do that and she's like okay and i'm like yeah that sounds good nice so yeah so i think that's wrong with that no not at all yeah. but i am excited because four days off from work and i am going to be watching a shit ton of disney plus and screeners nice. and Sleep. Uh, it's gonna be good. <laughs> Sweet. It's gonna be good. Um, yeah, but I don't have any movie or TV traditions or anything. Yeah, me either. Yeah. Any favorite Thanksgiving episodes of TV? Ooh. Um. Probably Slapsgiving. Oh yeah. From uh, How Much Brother. Oh yeah. That's wow. like probably my favorite episode of that show. Nice. It's top fiver for sure. Nice. I haven't revisited that show in a long time. Same. For, for obvious yeah. reasons. Uh, right. Uh, but yeah, that, I, I love that episode. Yeah, me too. That's that's a good one. Um, There's a lot of good friends ones too. Yeah, that's true. They, they're they actually having uh, Friendsgiving in the theater. Mm. They're having like uh, pairing up a bunch of Thanksgiving episodes. I, I don't think I'm going to go to it, but okay. Um, but yeah, by the time this episode goes up, I think it's already going to be passed. There's also two episodes of The West Wing that are great, which oh, nice. Paige and I have been watching lately. Oh, nice. Because uh, she kind of made me mad. She just started watching it because oh, I, yeah. I wasn't home, and she was like, "Well, I can't watch anything while you're gone." As well as in Louisville. Oh yeah. She's like, "I got to find something to watch." She started rewatching The West Wing, and now she's really into it. And so Jeez. I'm rewatching The West Wing for the fourth time. <laughs> Um, God. Uh, but there's an episode where um, I'll spoil it. It's the show's old. Okay. Um, uh, the president has um, played by um, Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen mm-hmm. uh, has a um, is trying to get Charlie, his assistant, to find him the perfect turkey carving knife, and he keeps Charlie will pick one, bring it to him, and he's like, "Oh no, it's not good enough." And he he picks like eight or nine of them, and then finally at the end, he's like, "What's going on? Why is this such a big deal?" And then he pulls out his family's carving knife that was made for his family by Paul Revere. Oh, God. And he gives it to Charlie. Aw. It's like, like it makes me tear up every single time. Wow. It's like a really beautiful scene. Charlie was played by Dulé Hill? Dulé Hill, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then there's another one where um, uh, the president, he's a huge fucking dork in the show, right. if you've ever seen it. He finds out that there's a hotline to tell you how to cook a turkey. Okay. And he's like, uh, we're calling that right now. And so they call the Butterball Hotline. <laughs> oh, wow. And it's like the president. I may, I may imagine, I know, let's remove the politics from the situation, but imagine sure. Donald Trump called the right. the Butterball Hotline. It's just it's a hilarious God. scenario. And like the person's like, your voice sounds familiar. He's like, well, I, I, I do radio. You might have <laughs> might heard me on, like, it's, it is, you can look it up on YouTube. It's that's hysterical. Good. It's one of my favorite scenes of that whole show. Nice. And that's one of my favorite shows, so. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I uh, would say I, I want to maybe revisit the Master of None episode of Thanksgiving. Nice. Um, and then also, uh, oh, Simpsons has some good Thanksgiving oh, yeah. stuff. There's one that always makes me kind of cringe a little bit, <laughs> um, just because I it's it's like Bart does like Bart and Lisa are having an argument or something and Bart destroys this centerpiece that she made for the for the dinner table. Okay. And like it's destroyed like it like he's 
I think he tries to run away or something because everyone hates him or something. I don't know. And he mm-hmm. ends up on the roof and he's like listening to them. Like, I don't, I don't know. It always it just makes me like cringe a little bit just because, uh, I don't know. It's, it's more dramatic than, mm-hmm. than usual. Right. Um, but yeah, but yeah. So I think that should do it. Yes. For this. Yeah. yeah. So to close out this episode, um, I think I'm going to play the Heartland red carpet interviews that I have from a month ago. <laughs> um, so go check that out. Uh, keep listening and listen to that. I'm very proud of the work that we did for at Heartland and uh, super excited for you know you guys to hear the interviews and stuff. So stay tuned for that. Um, in the meantime, or check us out next time. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you for listening. That's what I was fishing for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for, thank you for listening. Um, if you're in the giving mood for Thanksgiving, uh, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash obsessive viewer yep uh one dollar for rss feed and five dollars for videos that we are going to post more of i promise (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so yeah thank you guys so much for listening happy thanksgiving for you of uh uh, for our listeners in the states because we are internationally (laughs) that's true yeah um happy thursday to (laughs) everyone else uh yeah so thank you guys for listening and we'll see you next time thanks all right, my name is Matt. I'm from here in Indianapolis. I have a podcast and everything. Uh, why don't you tell us your name and the film you're here for? My name is Ashimal Falca, and I'm here for Greener Grass. Great. I watched the film, and I, I loved it. You were great in it. It's Thanks. hilarious. Uh, what was the experience like? It was this, And was this your first film? No, this is my ac- that was actually my third film. Oh, wow, congratulations. Thanks. Nice. And, um... It was really fun because I got to drive around in golf carts and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, I was yeah. super jealous and when I was watching it that there are so many golf carts and everything because that's <laughs> yeah. just so much fun. Yeah, <laughs> and everyone's driving them cool. around everywhere. Yeah. Uh, what was the experience like Like watching yourself? Because like, you're, you're a, a young man. Um, and like, how is, it, how is it seeing yourself on screen and being in a movie? It's kind of fun screen, <laughs> seeing myself on screen. Nice. And being in a movie is really fun because you get to meet new people and you get mm-hmm. to travel to new places. That's great. And is this your first time at like a film festival or have you done... Actually, this is my third film festival. Wow. Congratulations on that. Have you been to Heartland before? <laughs> no, this is my first time. Great. How are you liking it so far? It's really fun. Great. That's awesome. And how do you feel about just the film itself? Because it's, it's so... Like like you said to the other interviewer, it's very weird, but it's it's very fun. It's it's yeah. it's very hilarious. How do you feel about the finished product? Um, it's actually yeah, it's weird, <laughs> and I feel really good about it because I know that everybody did good in the movie. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, I agree completely. And did mm-hmm. you say that your your mom had a small part in it? Yeah, she was in there for like a second. Nice. And uh, how did you get like attached to the project? How did you get the How did you get the role? Um, my agents, uh, I was like, I was like six or seven, something like that, and, um, I was really weird back, I was was like, weird like that, Sure. and, um, so they, so they, and the movie was weird, so they just got me into it. Perfect, well, it sounds like it was made for you. (laughs) Um, great, well, thank you so much for your time, and, uh, yeah, congratulations on the film, and and hope you have a great rest of the festival and a great uh, career ahead of you. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So that's what I was getting. All right, I'm here with Kirsty and Viv from House of Champions. Chatted with you guys yesterday at the press junket, mm-hmm. and uh, just tell us, uh, just refresh the audience on what the film is, and uh, yeah. Um, we've been working for three or four years with a community of intellectually disabled adults in a residential community in a small town in New Zealand, and we've followed one household in particular that has three of the flatmates that are actually training for the Special Olympics, but it's really about their lives and the unique situation they're in with the amount of support they need to achieve the most normal of things. And um, so the Special Olympics just guides us through that path, really. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's three, I mean, there's three great stars. They really are. Nice. Um, Celeste is a she's our diva Mm -hmm. and she was actually she got a featured extra part in a Netflix film that was made 
for the first time in New Zealand earlier in the year. Oh, so wow, that's awesome. The yes. camera loves Celeste, nice. and Celeste is pretty gorgeous. And um, and then the other flatmate is Carla, and she is um, she just adores Celeste, and uh, also just keeps the place together. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. And then there's. The charming Jonathan, who um, we discovered while we were making, we had no idea when we started making the film, but he has a real interest in politics, right. and um, and in the film he uh, gets to ask a question from a touring politician who's on the campaign trail. So amazing, and oh, yeah. uh, the rest unfolds from that. Oh, yeah. yeah, so that's fantastic. That's great. Yeah, oh, yeah, and and then there's the Special Olympics mm-hmm. at at the time that we. We were filming we really had no idea what the outcome was going to be mm-hmm. for each of our athletes yeah. and um, it, it, it actually it all turned out pretty good very good <laughs> yeah. and uh, how's the experience been with Heartland again? oh it's been great we've had a really good time yeah That's awesome. we've met some great people mm-hmm. you great know selection, people, great selection of films yeah mm-hmm. and, and, and great to just give us some advice because this oh, is yeah. our first Feature dot right, and um, and there's been a lot of people that we can sort of uh, ask questions about, you know, what we should do next, where we should go, and to have that Heartland Laurel, yeah, I think will be a really good and, help. And to oh, be in amongst such a great caliber of films, I, I think. Know. Oh yeah, we're humbled. <laughs> Our little film from New Zealand about yeah. three intellectually disabled people. It's oh. very, it's great. <laughs> Uh, you guys are great, and this is this is uh, it's really great to chat with you again yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, once again, where can we find your information online, like the website and everything? Um, it's on Instagram, House of Champions Doc, mm-hmm. and also our business website, which is oh, actually the best one to look at is www.amystreet.net, and there'll be a link on that. Perfect. Yeah. And do you guys want to talk a little bit about your web series that you did as well? Yeah, the web, seri- the web series has done really well for us. We took out the Grand Jury Prize in Melbourne, oh, Berlin, congratulations. Rio, R- no, um, no, Buenos, Buenos Aires, Aires, the UK, Miami. Yeah. So and people, there's a real interest in these this type of community. I think. Yeah. And that can be found on Amy Street. My say, how am I saying the Amy? Is that all right? A M Y S T R E E T dot net. Dot net. We're getting better at the accent. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, it's a pleasure to chat with you guys again, yeah. and uh, I'm sure I'll see you around at some point with your next show. Right. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got that. Thank you. How are you guys doing? We're great. Good great. to see you. We're here. We've got two actors from Samir. Do you want to reintroduce yourselves? Yeah, sure. Uh, Iman Nizamzadeh. I'm playing Samir. And I'm Jeremy Glazer. I play Daniel Herschel. Perfect. And you guys just had your world premiere last night? Yeah, it was. Correct? Yeah, last How night. did it go? How, how are you guys feeling? Uh, I, feel, I mean, it was well received. It felt nice. great. You know, I wish I could say that, like, you know, it's like a live performance where, you know, every night is different, but, you know, you're sort of watching the same film, and the sure. only thing I could say is how did the audience receive it, and it was received well. Perfect. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it was really exciting. You know, it's finally out in the world, and yep. and it's nice to see that everybody stuck around for the Q&A, so that's always a good sign. Nice. That's mm-hmm. great. And, yeah, a uh, lot of questions. Oh, that's, that's yeah. what, that was my next question. Yeah. That's great, because I didn't yeah. get a chance to see it, unfortunately. Um, but that's, that's so great. I knew that, you know, you guys... I, seemed so tight when I talked to you guys yesterday that it just like I'm sure that that comes through in the finished product as well yeah I would say there's definitely great chemistry right from the get go when we all met uh, just at the table read even Um, yeah I thought I thought you know the film itself is really well crafted and uh, we all spent a lot of time together meeting outside of production just to get to know each other especially Jeremy and I you know we we made it an effort to just spend that time together so already without having to do anything that relationship was there perfect yeah that's great and do you guys want to talk a little bit more about the usc connection of it as well sure well neither of us actually went to usc or are uh we basically are actors just uh hired on the project but um you also are taking a leap of faith because you don't know to what capacity is it student film or is are these are they 
still learning? Or do they not really know how to run a crew or, 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 ca- or how to handle cast or direct us? But it, to much to my surprise, at least, it was uh, much more well run than some of the bigger productions that I've been on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things that I got a little bit of insight on is my brother did uh, a project called The Mad Whale about two years ago, okay. and it was sort of the same setup: nine directors. James Franco was involved with that, and he's sort of been involved with these projects all the way through, okay. with the exception of this one and another one that just happened last year. Um, so I knew about the project. I, <laughs> I had seen The Mad Whale, so I knew exactly the quality ah. and work that was getting going into it. And they also okay. went through a really rigorous um, process of selecting their directors. Oh, nice. The, the directors had to go through uh, letters that, and recommendations oh, wow. and pitches. And, and, pitches and, and, and like they're basically their track record of work to be able to be selected for this. Wow. So we weren't just dealing with, you know, yeah. with anybody. Yeah, it wasn't just a class project. Yeah. So, it was, so nice. yeah, it was elevated to a much higher level. Yeah. That's right. Well, that's great. Well, yeah. congratulations on the film and Thank the you. success of the, the premiere and everything. Um, do you guys have any stops coming up? I think I asked you yesterday, but since it's a new episode, do you have any stops? <laughs> For this film in particular? Yeah. Uh, I believe it's... There's some, there's some submissions that we have, but yeah, we haven't heard anything. So. Warner Brothers is also heading up a lot of it, so I think that with their new streaming service, HBO Max, mm-hmm. they it's in contention for that. I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but sure. we know that they uh, have helped with uh, funding the project, so they may have more say on where it goes next. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for chatting with me, and I yeah. uh, hope you have a great rest of the <laughs> rest of the festival and a uh, great rest of the festival run for this. Thank you. Thank you so I think we're up next to go shout that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. If you guys want to grab this microphone, it's all right, so you guys are here for The Garden Left Behind. Yes. This is the uh, Richard D. Probst uh, Social Impact Narrative Feature winner this year at Heartland. Uh, congratulations, first Thank of all. you so much. Yeah, and if you guys want to go down the line and introduce yourselves and tell us your roles in the film. My name is Flavio Alves. I'm the director of the film The Garden Left Behind. John Rotundo, screenwriter. Uh, my name is Anthony Abdo. I play the male lead of Chris in The Garden Left Behind. Perfect. So uh, tell us a little bit about the film. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but uh, tell us about the film and uh, how you feel about Heartland so far. Uh, the God Left Behind is about a Mexican trans woman who is struggling to make a life for herself as an undocumented immigrant in New York City. And uh, it's good to be here, you know, as I have said so many times before, you know, I have been applying to this festival tons of times, and this, this is the first time that uh, we get ac- I get accepted as a director, you know, oh, so I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and it's an amazing festival, you know. So, yeah. We just love being here at the festival. Everybody's so welcoming. The audience is so electric. You know, the response that we got at our screenings thus far have been amazing. A lot of buzz, people talking about it, asking us about it. And the Q&As have been so enlightening, having that dialogue with the community. In many ways, the Q&A is an educational experience, you know. People learning. Just yesterday at the Q&A, um, it, it sparked a dialogue between two audience members, right, discussing something. Um, and so it's that sort of of dialogue, that sort of conversation that we are trying to push forward. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, this has been... Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. This has been a great experience here. I mean, the staff has been incredible, uh, so, so accommodating, and couldn't really ask for more. I mean, we've been to a lot of festivals now, so it, uh, every place has its, has its thing, and here it's mm-hmm. just been so welcoming, and the staff has been great, so... Nice. That's great to hear, and... Yeah. Uh, where can we find like your social media and everything, and, and the website for the film and everything? I'm sorry. Uh, social media, website, all that. Oh, social, social media. media. Yeah, we are everywhere on Facebook and Perfect. Twitter. We we are doing a really good job in terms of spreading the word on, on social media. So, and the website is uh, thegardenleftbehind.com. You know, so anyone can find more about the film. Where we're gonna be next? And again, the film is still traveling to festivals, and then our next stop is Philadelphia uh, Film Festival. So, and uh, also the film is playing in Europe. Now, f- wow. now uh, right now, as you speak, the film is, is playing like, in Italy, you know. So it's good too because we, it's not like a, um, a New York thing, you know, U.S. thing. You know, the film is traveling everywhere, you know. That's fantastic. Well, that's amazing. Uh, thank you guys once again so much for chatting with me, and uh, congratulations again, and uh, best of luck going forward on the festival circuit and everything. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you.
Is that Samir? Samir, right, yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, why don't you introduce yourself again, and uh, since it's a new episode, like tell us about the film as well. Hi, my name is Maria Sanctus, and I'm one of the co-directors of Samir, and Samir is a f- a feature film about a man who's wrongfully accused after 9-11 and sent to Guantanamo Bay and upon his release he seeks revenge on all the people that put him there. Perfect. Yeah. And it had its world premiere yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did that go? How was it? It was great. I mean, I haven't seen it on the big screen yet, so that was really amazing to see. And it was just really nice to have some time away and then come back and watch it. And oh, absolutely. the audience was really responsive to the film and also the whole process involved. That's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, could you tell me a little bit more about the USC side of it? Yeah. So it's a, a USC feature film. Um, so the way that the, the film works is that the script is developed in a screenwriting class with 10 writers and they all put it together and then once it's ready they hand it off to the producers and the producers of the film and a, a bunch of the other directors from the previous year select the incoming directors to direct the new film and so there's not, there were nine of us that were chosen and each of us directed a sequence of the movie perfect yeah. well congratulations on the thank film you so and, much and on everything and uh <laughs> Best of luck going forward on the, on the in the festival circuit and everything, and uh, yeah, look forward to chatting with you again sometime when you come back. Amazing! Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you. Hi. So this is Mary and Michelle. Hi. Hi. I'm Mary. Um, they're both actresses in the world premiere last night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I chatted with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. already know everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> want to grab this mic? Oh, you had the oh. Uh, for both of us. Yeah, if you don't mind. All right, so why don't you go, go ahead and say your names again and tell us about the, uh, the film you're here for and uh, how did the world premiere go? My name is Mary Opik and uh, I play the mother of Samir and uh, the world premiere I thought it went fantastic last night and uh, we're very grateful to Heartland Film Festival to have us here with you. Uh, I actually didn't have much information about Heartland, and I learned how wonderful it is and, um, you know, the hospitality and everything that went along with it. We're very proud of the picture. It's a very unique subject. It's a a very unique way of shooting a picture with nine directors. Absolutely. And as actors, and I think it was a testament even for us to see how we can manage all these directors around, daily changing or hourly changing for that matter. But uh, it was fun, and it's an important message about Guantanamo Bay, and we understand that it's a low budget picture, but within given that fact, I think they have done an amazing job, and the message is the most important part of it. And I utterly enjoy working with Michelle and Iman on this picture and the directors attached. Perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it went really well. Um, it was the first time that I'd seen the movie. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was able to switch my uh, actor's head off and sure. see it as a moviegoer. Um, it was great, and I think uh, uh, the response was brilliant, and that was uh, reflected in the Q&A afterwards. There were really intelligent questions, um, deep questions, um, and provoking thought provoking so nice. yeah so I walked away feeling like it was it was pretty good um, I hope everyone enjoyed it um, it felt like a very supportive audience uh, so that's yeah that's so and you know what I think is that there is a camaraderie in this work mm-hmm. that I, I believe that within the actors within the directors within the team it wasn't about this was this is not a Hollywood typical picture right. so there was a camaraderie that brought us together mm-hmm. and we knew that we were going to give our best you know, to make sure that everything on the screen is is what it needs to be, oh, and uh, I suppose you know all of us individually. It wasn't that uh, it, it was a mission to accomplish, yeah. and I am very very pleased and proud to work with such amazing talent, including Iman and Michelle. So I hope that there's more work for all of us together again. <laughs> well, I'm sure you guys will find something uh, when you when you have that kind of like lightning of chemistry. I'm sure yeah. you'll find each other uh, with another some project. Good chemistry. Good nice. chemistry yeah. and projects like this doesn't come along because majority of the pictures are action oriented or uh, subjects that is as far as the marketing of it is concerned is very uh, sellable and this is a difficult picture naturally or any other type of social message or, or political picture is hard uh, and of course we are a part of it and we are 
representative of uh, that world of cinema, so we have to take that responsibility into projecting good messages, regardless of the contracts or regardless of the typical yeah. Hollywood right. you know, uh, it, concept. It, yeah, it can be a hard sell, but it's an important sell, and I'm yeah, sure that for people sure. will It's a conversation respond. that needs to be had. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for chatting with me. Congratulations on the thank film, you. and wish you guys best of luck, and hope to see you again soon sometime at, on the festival circuit again. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much for having us here. No problem. Thank you. Oh, no! Ah. <laughs> I don't watch TV. Uh, well, all the time. I'll try you're going to gonna watch movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll try not to ask you any gotcha questions like that. Go for it. All right. Do you want to grab this No. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. All right. I'm here with Dennis Christopher from Breaking Away, the 40th anniversary screening. Uh, how are you feeling about the about the anniversary screening and Heartland as well? I'm really glad that Indiana asked us back for the 40th anniversary. It's it's the home of this movie, and it's just the time for us to come back. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, they really welcomed us with open arms. But welcomed me with open arms, and mm-hmm. I'm really proud to be part of this festival. Oh, this absolutely. is one of the best there is in America. So oh, that's I'm thrilled about the whole thing. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. And how's your experience been? Uh, when did you get in? And how busy and yeah. wonderful. Nice. Yeah. That's great. Um, so tell us about uh, about the film itself for those who haven't seen it, um, and what how it feels to be on its 40th anniversary. Well, I, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, tell me, ask me the question again. I'm oh, so sure. Sorry. I'll, I'll try to rephrase it. Um, we just spoke about that, so it's yeah. hard for me to react. <laughs> I know. Uh, tell us about the film itself and uh, kind of how it's grown over the years in, in your eyes. Well, uh, I didn't quite realize um, the story that. Well, aside from being one of the best sports movies of all time and recognized as such, it's got another message about a class struggle in America that's never actually been spoken of or referred to. They know these things in Europe. But that's why having an English director and a Serbian writer uh, helped us because they had a perspective on America that was very true. We're too close to see it, Americans. Yeah. So with someone that has adopted America as their country and loves America even more than we do, because we got it for free, right. so to speak, um, they had a perspective that has never been explored before, that gives you a, a satisfying feeling, aside from having a satisfying entertainment. And it also speaks to family... Uh, to family problems and to family solutions mm-hmm. that are very, very sweet and very touching. And it's goddamn funny, too. Yeah. It just is. Yeah. That's great. Um, are you going to be doing a Q&A after this yeah. screening? Great. Are you nervous about that or excited? <laughs> great. Uh, so tell me about some, uh, like, what films are you excited about? Like, what gets you excited about, about film in general? <laughs> it's what I've chosen as my only career. Sure. And I've been doing it for 40 years. So the money, then. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the money. Oh, absolutely. And moments like this. Yeah. Yep. No. <laughs> That's great. Uh, are you on social media at all? Or? Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter. Okay, do you want to throw out your Twitter? Oh, yeah, Dennis Christo, the number four. Perfect. Oh, C-H- clever. C-H-R-I-S-T-O, and then the number four. Perfect. And uh, I interact with the people that tweet me. So Sweet. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. We you. also have yeah. an anniversary... Oh, yeah. Next year, a picture I did called Fade to Black, and there's a whole resurgence of interest in it because of the re-release of the movies, having been in the original. Um, it's a good time for movies. It's a good time oh, yeah. for anniversaries. Mm-hmm. Is it? And how long has it been since you've seen Breaking Away in the theater? Two weeks ago, I was oh, at a, wow. Well, the, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, the American Cinematheque uh, oh, honored nice. us for our 40th anniversary too. So. Very cool. Well, congratulations on, on everything, and uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the festival and the screening itself. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. I need to hold that. Yeah, if you don't mind. Thanks, one here. Okay, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about the film? Sure. Uh, my name is Amber McGinnis. I'm the producer and director of a film called International Falls. It's a narrative feature. Uh, it's a story about a woman from a small town who has these secret aspirations of becoming a comedian and has to face some really harsh truths about her life to find 
her in her comedy voice. <laughs> nice. So, uh, so Hardline provided provided press with uh, the screeners, and uh-huh. I haven't had a chance to see International Falls yet. Okay. One of my contributors on my website, he raved about it. Oh, and, nice. Yeah. So I'm like really excited to see it. Cool. And, uh, Thank you. He and I are going to review it on the podcast and like next week. But awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm really proud of it. I think it dances like a fine line between comedy and tragedy in a really mm-hmm. cool way, and kind of looks at like the truths behind comedy that you know um so tell us about the project how, how did it get off the ground and uh you're the road to heartland yeah sure yeah. uh so i i know the writer thomas ward um from back when i lived in texas and he and i had collaborated on some stuff and wanted to find an opportunity to work together and the story was originally a two-person play and when he oh, wow. adapted it into a screenplay he sent it to me and since like that was like six years ago oh wow so we have just been on this amazing journey of you know continuing the process of developing a two person play into a screenplay Mm -hmm. um, opening up the possibilities of what we can see in a film and then also just from a producing standpoint I started my own production company and teamed with my co-producer Nicholas Dunleavy and yeah just brought this whole team together and we're like premiered in the spring in Atlanta and yeah, we're so happy to be here at Heartland. Nice. That's awesome. And uh, have have you done feature work before? Or is this... this is my first feature. Wow! Congratulations. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, that's great. Uh, did you have any kind of like fears or anything like putting it out there? Like how how's the how's the festival circuit been for it? It's been really great. People have been very generous, and I. I, I don't think I had any fear about doing my first feature because it just felt like it was time. I come from a theater background and had directed a lot of full-length plays okay. and had done several short films and stuff, and it just felt like that it was time. You know, yeah. I was I was ready for it. I was chomping at the bit, and that nice. meant that I wasn't going to take no for an answer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's so, great. How did you? How did? How was the kind of transition from directing like theater? Like, how does it compare to directing theater and film? Because obviously, it's wildly different. Yeah, they're very different. I mean, the heart of any anything is like just good storytelling, right? And yeah. then it's like finding actors who can tell the truth. Um, so in that way, it's very similar. Um, but the thing that's different is just like the technical aspect of it and like the way you get to revise film in the editing process, which is very different than a play where you just right. open it and... It is it what it is. It's locked, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it has, like, the, the, the feeling of unpredictability every mm-hmm. night because it's live, something oh, yeah. can change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, so it's 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 kind of, it's, it's fun dancing between the two. I still have a theater career and still do both. And I love both mediums, and I like that different types of stories suit the different forms, you know. Yeah, um, so, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. And uh, are there any other shops on... on in terms of festivals lined up for inter- uh, inter- yeah well since we premiered in the spring like we're starting to wind down our mm-hmm. festival uh, circuit but we're sure. in five film festivals this weekend oh, which wow. has just been is crazy nuts. yeah it's, and it's it's amazing like I, I was just at the Santa Fe Independent Film Festival nice came here and then I'm going to the Tallgrass Film Festival tomorrow wow. and we're also at the Twin Cities Film Festival and Portland Film Festival right now as well wow. so yeah congratulations thank Obviously, you that's, that's huge and uh, yeah well is there a social media set up for, for you or the film or yeah you, um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Amber Director and uh, the film's internationalfallsmovie.com and that's our handle for Facebook and stuff as well so Perfect. yeah alright great well thank you so much for chatting with me Thank uh, you. Congratulations on the film, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of the multiple festivals here at this Thank weekend. Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, a little... <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, do you want to go ahead and say your name again in the film you're Sure. Yeah, my name's Tari Yashida. I'm the producer of Moonlight Sonata, Deafness in Three Movements. It's a documentary feature here. Great. Well, how has your experience been with Heartland in the past 24 hours or so since I last talked to you? Yeah, it's been awesome. Everyone here is so friendly. Great. People just want to get to know you and mm-hmm. what you're up to. It's been a really inspiring That's 36 awesome. hours, I would say. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I don't um, want to leave. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. That's why That's why I am primarily 
focus here in Indianapolis. That's why I never leave Indianapolis. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, great. Well, uh, let's see. It doesn't. Does it screen tomorrow at all, or is it? Yeah. So okay, the great. film screens at twelve fifteen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's the last opportunity to see it here. Um, and then we're also playing in theaters nationally. Right. And then we'll be broadcasting on HBO sometime in December. Perfect. Yeah. Wow. Well, once again, congratulations. That's that's amazing. And. <laughs> Like I, like we talked yesterday, it sounds like just a really uh, emotionally kind of like driven documentary that just seems yeah. really, really great as of, in terms of just providing perspective on, on family dynamics and, and uh, you know, death uh, subjects. Yeah. You know, I actually, we had a couple of deaf folks in the audience today and one of them came up to me after the film and said... I stopped playing piano because I got frustrated with it. And this little boy has inspired me to stop playing again. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to start again. So that's thank you. Beautiful. And that was just such a beautiful moment. You know, that's, that's why incredible. it's so great to bring the film to festivals yeah. like this. Because you're just reaching people that wouldn't have otherwise experienced the story. Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the just more powerful things about filmmaking in general. Like yeah. It's just, it's inspirational. It's yeah. aspirational. It's, it's amazing. So, wow. That is, that's, a, that's incredible. <laughs> great. Okay. Well, uh. I think I've run out of questions again. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for chatting. Honesty is the best policy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, and can you it. tell us where we can find the film online as well, like the social media and all that? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, www.moonlightsonata.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're also on Facebook at Moonlight Sonata at Deafness in Three Movements. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again for chatting with yeah, me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Congratulations on the film and, and everything. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, doing? Good. Good. How are you? Yeah. And Kathy, the director. Kathy, director of last year at Cross. And would you guys mind if you won't mind sharing this microphone? All right. Hi, guys. How's it going? How have you? How are you? Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves and uh, tell us about the film? Hi, I'm Kathy Bruner. I'm director of Last Year at the Crossing. My name is Elise Horb, and I'm the co-producer and co-editor. Roger Yance, one of the subjects. Nice. And I got a chance to see you last year at the Crossing. Um, really great documentary about just education and and like kind of uh, uh, the uh, troubled youths. I guess would would be the way to categorize the the subjects. And it's just I, I really appreciated how like raw it was and how it just it it lets the how you how you let the the subjects kind of tell their stories as opposed to just telling us like about their circumstances we actually see it and that's something i really appreciated and i felt like that was a very effective use of the documentary format um so anyway uh could you tell me about the production and, and how it went and uh how how harlan has been for you well harlan is a wonderful festival we have um been on the fringes of it before with some of our students actually being here, but this is my first time to be here as a filmmaker, so it's a great honor. Heartland's a wonderful festival, so um, we're glad to have last year at the Crossing Screen here. That's fantastic, yeah. and it does have an Indiana connection. It was uh, uh, filmed in, in Marion, Indiana, is that correct? It was filmed yeah. in Marion, so we were honored to be part of the Indiana Spotlight for, that's, yeah, that's for this great. festival. Yeah, Heartland's very... Loving of, of especially local uh, spotlighted filmmakers. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so, Roger, I want to ask you uh, just about the process of being the subject of a documentary and um, about your work as an educator as well, because that's something that it comes through really well in the documentary. That it's it's something that you're clearly passionate about, and just like the the uh, the work you do with with the students is just really inspiring because like it is it's hard to keep them you know in line and make sure that they're they're doing like what they need to do so can you speak to the uh the experience of being in a documentary and your work as an educator as well yeah it was an interesting uh thing to go through having a camera uh, uh on me in like really stressful moments or you have to make split decisions on how to discipline a student or how to handle a situation and you know things are always scrutinized anyway because students are watching how we handle stuff and then yeah. now there's a camera that we can replay and see how we handle things and so yeah there, it, at moments it brought more stress but overall it was it was kind of crazy and unexpected how welcoming the camera was even by students um, they just with Kathy there they knew that there was if, if nothing else there was someone there to listen mm-hmm. you know and uh, that was a neat experience and good for our students and it's it took a while to adjust for everyone, but I mean, she shot an hour, a year and a half, and by wow. you know, after a few months, everyone was just like, "There's the camera, of course." Yeah, you know, how's, yeah. How's it going? Now? Yes, yeah. and uh, when the film shooting was over, 
I was like, oh, where's Kathy at? This is weird, you know? And, <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, so just... Readjust. Yes. Yeah. So it's like Kathy and Elise and the other shooters and the cameras are just part of the family, and so it quickly got adjusted to it. That's great. Um, it, it just seems like a just very organically done documentary. It just it, You have that feel of, like, it's just the camera's there and it's just capturing what's going on. So I, I really enjoy that in terms of documentary filmmaking. And uh, so what was the experience like, like editing the film and producing the film as well? Editing the film was so much fun. We had 400 <laughs> hours of footage. Wow. We we just really spent a couple. Well, we spent months just rewatching scenes over and over again. Like one thing we did was we took all the scenes from one character. So we took all of Roger's scenes and put them together. We took all of Devin's scenes and put them together, and then watched through them to start eliminating and figuring out where were where were the real compelling moments in their stories out of an hour of footage for one person, cut it down to 20 minutes. So it was just fun to rewatch our stuff and figure out where the best moments were. Great. That's awesome. And uh, so what was the experience like just, you know, uh, I'm sorry, was this is this your first film? Am I correct in that? Or how, what were the circumstances? I've been involved in film up? production for a long time, probably okay. 25 years, but this is my first feature film. Wow. Congratulations. So, thank you. Yeah. yeah it was uh, probably never do it again. No, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a couple thousand hours worth of work, oh, yeah. so um, I'm not sure that I will ever have the time to do that again, sure. but it was a really rich and rewarding experience that's yeah. fantastic and how did the project come about like what what attracted you to the project and uh how did it uh, my husband and i both went back to school for master okay. of fine arts in film and so it became my thesis project basically oh, wow. for two years in school while i was still teaching college at the oh, same time wow. so it was pretty wow. intense yeah i can yeah. i can imagine well it came through great and it was it was uh, a very engaging documentary and congratulations on it and thank you so much yeah and uh I, speaking for myself i hope you do more thank <laughs> but, you so much but it's i understand kind of you. yeah <laughs> i'm um, gonna do a short film next that's oh, the plan perfect <laughs> <laughs> all right great well it was a pleasure chatting with you guys can you tell us where we can find last year at the crossing like social media website all that yes its website is at last year at the crossing.org <laughs> and then if you want to know more about the crossing to learn more about The Crossing, you can visit CrossingEducation.com or find us on Facebook, Crossing Education. Great. All right. Well, thank you guys so much, and, and congratulations, and best of luck on the rest of the festival and, and everything. Thanks, Thanks so much. And now, here's a short clip from our Patreon-exclusive RSS feed. To hear the full clip and more exclusive Patreon content, go to patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of $1 per month. Thank you and enjoy. Pork. Um, by the way, uh, I ordered pizza last night, and like as I was eating it, I was like... Uh, and this just shows just how single and alone I am. <laughs> um, I was sitting there eating pizza on my little... Uh, makeshift table that is a bar stool mm. uh watching disney plus and watch it looking at my cat uh when i thought like what what is pepperoni <laughs> like <laughs> like because like i had never questioned like what type of meat it was really yeah i had no idea and i googled what is pepperoni <laughs> yeah. by the way that's the title of this patreon thing <laughs> 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 um the Obsessive Viewer podcast is edited and produced by Matt Hurt and presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. For a full archive of our episodes, go to ObsessiveViewer.com slash OV archive. You can also like our Facebook page and join the OV Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And follow us on Twitter at Obsessive Viewer and at Obsessive Tiny. And follow our recurring co-hosts at I am Mike White, that's me, at R.A. Fekis and at Burger underscore Lurker. If you enjoy the show, please take a couple minutes to leave us a rating and a quick review on Apple Podcasts. This is the easiest way to support what we do, and all it costs is a little bit of your time. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or support us on Patreon for recurring donations and access to commentary tracks and B-roll audio recorded exclusively for patrons at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. 
For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, visit our Tee Public store. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or you can simply search for Obsessive Viewer at teepublic.com, T-E-E, public.com. For information about our annual live event showcasing short horror films from local filmmakers, check out shocktoberinirvington.com. And for an archive of all our events, as well as news about potential future events, head over to obsessiveviewer.com slash live. For more podcast content, you can find Anthology, Matt's solo podcast covering The Twilight Zone, and other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows at anthologypod.com and on Twitter at OVAnthologyPod. You can also find Tower Junkies, a podcast where Matt and Tiny share their love of all things Stephen King and his magnum opus, The Dark Tower series, at TowerJunkiesPod.com and at TowerJunkiesPod on Twitter. And finally, check out The Secular Perspective, Tiny's side project podcast, which tackles current events and life's big questions from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda at thesecularperspective.com. The theme music for The Obsessive Viewer comes courtesy of the band Loud Like from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. Additional bumper music is provided courtesy of As Good As It Gets, which can be found at facebook.com slash asgoodasitgetsband. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Kitty! Kitty!